Today's message is the glory of motherhood. The glory of motherhood. Now, the word mother uh, brings with it a broad and endless spectrum of meanings and emotions. I mean, you say mom, and, and you, you kind of get all stuff. How many of you have ever seen the professional athletes? You ever see them go, dad? dad. I love you, dad. It's always mom, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. It's always mom, dad. I mean, even on Father's Day, they don't go, for, hey, dad. They just, if I say mom on Father's Day. You know, moms are real special. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, traditionally in, in society, the, the place of a mother has been uh, held a place of honor and held in high esteem. But over the past uh, 30, 40 years, well, you know, since the mid-60s, anti-establishment, anti-establishment, establishment, establishment revolution. Whew. Hallelujah. Just about got filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Again. Amen. Uh, you know, um, the, the, the role of motherhood has been radically challenged. Uh, and part of that is, you know, the same things that were written back in those days, you know, in order to, and to destroy America, we've got to break up the family. And that means we've got we, we to redefine roles of marriage and, you know, basically destroy the family unit, destroy marriage, that kind of thing. And so the attack has come against mom, being a mom. And uh, so I, I, here's how I wrote this. I said, traditionally, it's a place of honor and high esteem. Motherhood has come under an increasing attack from a generation of anti-establishment rebels who want to undermine the biblical view of women and motherhood. This extreme feminist mentality uh, undermines the biblical view of uh, women and motherhood. I'm sorry. With this extreme feminist mentality has caused many mothers who have an inner desire to be the mother they should be to attempt to live an unrealistic lifestyle. Now, let me say this. Sometimes things happen and you have to do things that you really don't want to do because of situations or whatever. But when, when you've got women who, who, who don't have to and they want to go out into the corporate world and, you know, just because they want to be fulfilled, okay? You know, I'm just as good as the man. I'm just as good as this. You know, that's, that's not a question. Women are better than men. There are things, yeah, you, men, women can do things that men can't do. They can have babies. And every time every man's ever seen a woman have a baby, they don't want to try that. Hello. So don't tell you this is a condemnation. I'm making a statement about a mindset and a generational attitude, a cultural attitude that we've developed, okay? Not if you're having to work as a woman. We understand that things happen and people have to do certain things. But I can tell you that if you've got the real heart of a mom, even though you're working, you really wish you could be with your kids all the time. You know, you, you'd rather not be doing it. But this feminist mindset that the world has put down and shoved down people's throats, you know, and, and the women think, well, you know, I'm just as good as you and I've got to have my career. You know, I'm going to tell you something. This, this is what I want to address. I want to address that mindset, okay? Don't get upset with me. Hear me out. All right. Um, but, you know, um, you, although the women have an inner de desire, there are people out there living an unrealistic lifestyle, balancing time-consuming, energy-stealing careers um, with, being a, with being, co uh, committing, being a committed full-time mom. That's, that's, a, that's a hard trick to, to do, pull off. Amen. I mean, you know, listen, if your kids are in school, you get up in the morning, drop them off at the school or the daycare, they take them to the school, you come home, you get them up, and I, and I know many parents, the kids are in bed 6, 7 o'clock, and they hadn't seen them all day. Came in and had dinner with them, put them in bed. Okay? Now listen, if, if, if financial issues have created that and you're just in a tough place, we understand that. That shouldn't be your mindset, that you have to go out and do your thing. All right? Hallelujah. The pressure for a woman to fulfill, the pressure for a woman to fulfill herself at the expense of the welfare of her children is in direct contradiction to biblical teaching um, of preferring above others above yourself. The real meaning of motherhood can only be understood within the final authority of the universe, the Bible. Now, again, I preface what I said just then with this. If you're in a situation where you have to do things, you have, and we understand that, but it should not be your, well, I've got the right to go out and work, or you don't want to stay home with the kids because they're too much trouble. I mean, you know, I, we have, Janie has a niece. She quit working. You know why she quit working? She wouldn't be with her kids so much. And she found out that by the time she drove her car to work, worked all day, worked all week, and, and, and put the kids in daycare, by the time she got down, she wasn't making any money. She was working to put the kids in daycare. Now, there are people who want to do that because they don't want to take care of the kids. Let me say something. I'm, I'm going to tell you something this morning. Motherhood, motherhood is a crowning glory for a woman. There is nothing like being a mom. Hello. Why do you think Satan has come after, you know, uh, come after uh, children by, through abortion and stuff? Because it, it, it robs women of their, their most crowning achievement in life is to, to bear and to raise children up in the way and nurture and admonition of the Lord, to be a mom. He's robbing, he's robbed a generation of many women of that opportunity, you know, through these different things. So let's talk about the biblical view. All right, let's go to, second, uh, to Titus 
2, 1 through 5. But thou, speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Everybody say sound doctrine. That the aged men be super, super. Boy, I am on a roll today. I'm sorry. Uh, yesterday, my day kind of got messed up. I got a call from Nathan, him, and, and the woods, and, and Cam all went up to Stone Mountain to go camping. Now, Cam had his own car. He had to leave early, so he left. I get a phone call from Nathan about, oh, about 3, 30, 4 o'clock. Hey, my belt broke. What belt? Well, I was riding down the road in the campground, and something went, bum, 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 and my car stopped working. And the park ranger came by and said, I'll give you a jump. And nothing. And then we looked under the car, and there's this rubber belt, serpentine belt broke. That's the alternator. That's the power steering. That's everything, you know. So I go to U-Haul and get a car dolly, drive an hour and a half to, up to Stone Mountain, hook up the car, drive it back home, uh, actually drop it in Sandy's, drop the woods off, went to that U-Haul, drop that off. By the time, it's four and a half hours. So if I say sober instead of sober, just forgive me. <laughs> I mean, we, we, had to, we had to put, and then we, when he parked the car, it's up on a hill, so we had to push the car back on the road, let it go down the hill, and pushed it back up the road so we could get, we got the, tra the, the dolly, we could take a run and start downhill and get it up on the thing, because we were going uphill on uphill dolly, that didn't work either, so we had to figure that one out, we did stop and get a milkshake afterwards, it was, a, it was hard work, that's right, all right, so let's go ahead and tie this too after that little story. One through five, but thou speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That the aged men be sober. All right, no more drinking. A grave, temperate. That was a joke. Actually, it wasn't a joke. It's sound doctrine. Sound in faith and love and patience. The aged women likewise. Listen, you older women. They've already had your children. They've brought them up. And now you're just an older woman in the church. This is what you're supposed to do. Um, that they, behave, that, that, that they ha be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, 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 to love their husbands and to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers in a home, good, I know this don't go over, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God is not blasphemed. Now, we understand obedient to your husband does not mean that he can tell you to go out, you know, and, 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 and uh, well, whatever. It means obedient in, in the things of God. Okay? First Timothy 5, 14, I will therefore the young women marry, bear children, guide the house, get another, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Now, let me say this. God's role for women was and always is and still will be that they, they, they be the ones who bear the children and guide the house. Now, let me say this. That is a full-time job. Now, these women who run off and do, their, do, do the man executive thing, and they talk about, you know, and, and they make fun of these women who stay home. Yeah, they, okay, you go, go get rid of your nanny, and you go home and keep the house clean and take care of all that stuff and raise those children and change all those diapers and feed and have food for the husband when he gets home, and you do all that, and then you'll, you'll be begging to go back to work at the corporate world. Hello. No, God has called you, amen? God has called women to be moms. And so what we want to do is we want to talk about, um, we're going to read from Proverbs here in just a minute, but let's, let's say this. Um, the Word teaches us that life is but a vapor that passes away, James 4.14. In light of this, what should the legacy of our moms be? That they were a corporate executive, a world-renowned politician, or the leader, a leader in her field of expertise? For the Christian mother, would not the legacy that all her children are born again, filled with the Spirit, and serving God be a much more enduring and eternal legacy? Hey. Amen. Remember, all that's in this world and will be burned with fire one day, and only those things which are eternal of eternal value shall pass the test of this fire. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 through, uh, 3, 13 through 15 says, Every man's works will be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and it, the fire shall try every man's work what sort it is. And if any man's work abide uh, with which he hath built, I'm sorry, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, uh, yet so as by fire. Now, think about this. We've got, we've got people, and the world, listen, the world mindset. I mean, you know, right now, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, uh, if you're in the corporate world, women have the upper hand. 
because it's the societal thing right now to, to advance women. You know, you know, and so men can't men can't be can't be the providers for the homes anymore. Uh, you know, it's, it's get, you know get, because everybody's got to have this this whatever. You know, women deserve this. You know, I'm not saying that if a woman goes out and does the same work as a man, she shouldn't be compensated fairly. What I'm saying is the mindset of the world is taking women out of the house of their most glorious role of being a mom. That is the culture we live in. That is the mindset we live in. But I'm going to tell you, women, you are special. Because you have the opportunity to shape a whole generation by shaping your children. The whole next generation will be shaped by somebody. And what better person to do it than the mom who is godly and loves the Lord to train their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, to shape and to mold that life into a life that honors and serves the Lord and can go out and, and do what God's called them to do in the earth. Amen. Now listen, you can, if, you're not, if you don't have any kids at home, you know, you can do things. If, after your kids are out of the house, you can go do stuff. But I'm telling you, if you, if you can afford to and if you can work it out to do it, your, your, your time of motherhood is the most important thing in the world. I said it's the most important thing in the world. Janie's mom stayed at home most of, most of their childhood. You know what? You know, and they, she remembers. That's when she learned to cook. Homemade buttermilk lard biscuits. <laughs> My wife thinks that canned biscuits are a treat. Really, because they, 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 they had homemade biscuits, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Her, her mom would get up, listen, they talk about a virtuous woman. Her mom would get up, and her dad would have one of those big, you know, uh, they weren't the drinky thermos, they were the food thermoses, okay? And she'd cook him, you know, uh, country fried steak and onion gravy and, and homemade biscuits. And she'd put that, the meat and stuff in that thermos, that was his lunch. Well, guess what? She'd cook enough for the kids. Got they had that for breakfast. They go out of the house with, you know, I mean, biscuits and country-style steak right there for breakfast. Hallelujah. Amen? She did that all the time. Amen? And so they, that, they, she learned to cook. She learned about being a mom. Her mom you know, was there, always there for them. When they came in the house, the house wasn't empty. Mom was there. Amen? You know, uh, I know things are going on in our society. We've been trained. You know, but it's tough when your kids get up at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, catch the school bus, Go to school. When they get home, they, they, when they get out of school, they're taken by a bus to a daycare until you can get home from work, and then you get home from work, and then they got to do homework, and by the time they get done with homework, it's time for them to go to bed. You haven't spent any quality time with them. Now, let me say this. If you're in that situation, you can start believing God for God to work things out so you can change that. Amen. That should be your desire. If you're doing that because that's what you want to do because you don't want to be home with those little rug rats and cookie crumb snatchers and all that kind of stuff, you need to change your attitude. You know, it's bobble heavy. Yeah, Amen. And men, you ought to be taking care of your wife in such a way as possible that she don't have to be away from the kids all day. And if, you know, listen, I understand we're in a financial, we're in one of the toughest financial places we've ever been in our country. We're in the greatest financial crisis since the Great Depression. I understand stuff's going on. I'm really addressing the attitude and the heart, not where you are if you've got a tough situation going on. I understand that. So don't be condemned. Don't be condemned. But what I'm trying to say is that your heart as a mom should long to do everything you can to be there with those kids and to see them grow up. We made one decision. You know, listen, Janie, Janie uh, took uh, 20 years off in her career. <laughs> and she went back to work because it, it was just, she needed, we needed for her to at this stage. You know, kids are in college and all that kind of stuff. She's not working because she loves to go to work. Are you here? She, I mean, she hates it that she's not even home when Nathan comes home. You know, that Nathan gets up and, and, and doesn't get to see his mom in the morning. He's in college and she hates that. Okay? I mean, it's tough on her for him to get up, her to get up and go to work, and he gets out of bed and goes to school, and he gets home late at night, and she's already ready to go to bed. And I think one time near the end of the semester, because of the thing he was doing in the op shop, that she didn't see him for five days. We were sleeping in the same house. And she was getting upset. I hadn't seen my buddy in five days. Was it five days? Sunday? It was like Thursday, Friday. Something like four and a half, five days. She didn't see him. Slept in the same house and didn't see him. Okay? So this, this is not, I know society has created things and the culture has created things, but we as a church have got to start having a mindset adjustment and a desire adjustment that we can, we can switch this thing back. Amen? So that the women are able to raise the children. We homeschooled our kids until they were at least in the seventh grade. Um, 
because we wanted, you know, the things we got to do with our children because we did that. The things we got to impart to them. The things we got to train them with. Hallelujah. And they all got scholarships for college, by the way. So don't think, you know, if you, if you do something like that, your kids are lost. Every one of our kids received substantial scholarships to go to college. Substantial. Hello? I, I kind of get, get laughed because the lowest GPA of all of our kids got the most scholarship. And, and they just, and Nathan, and we just got his letters. We got some of his stuff already. And they've already gone up this year for next year. <laughs> we're like, so GPA, well, anyway, we'll just leave that one alone. Lowest GPA, now it wasn't horrible. It was a great GPA as far as, you know, you know, but it was lower than the girls by far. They got the most scholarships. We're like, how'd this happen? Yeah, that's right, favor. All right, so. God's will for women is to be the guider of the house. Now, we're going to read Proverbs 31. We talk about Proverbs 31 a lot in re regards to women. Now, let me tell you that. If you're a Proverbs 31 woman, you are a busy chick. I just want you to know. You are at, you're not laying around in your gown, you know, watching as the world turns and, you know, the young and the restless and, you know, on the edge of night. Of course, the edge of night's gone and the world's turn is gone, aren't they? Then they, then they canceled this finally. And then the leading role person for Young and Restless just died. This week. That, woman, that woman was three days older than dirt. She was, I mean, she was old when the show started in the 70s. Anyway, hallelujah. Amen. I, just, I saw that because it, it was on, huh? She, put, she was on Westerns back in the 50s and stuff. And then when the Young and the rest, I when she won't Young, I call it the, I, I used to kind of call it the old and the relentless. Anyway. Let's look at Proverbs 31. Well, I guess we'll read, we'll read Proverbs 31, 10 through 31 or so. Understand that what I'm saying this morning is not for condemnation, but an, an idea to address our ideas, to address the way we think, so that we don't think that women are, you know, that the, the, two, the two career household is what it's all about. Did you know up until World War II, we had one career household that they made it and made it well? When women went into the factories during the war, they never came back out. And we ended up with a... Now, it takes two careers to live the lifestyle we lived with a one-career household before the war. Isn't that something? Why? Because the cost of living just went up. You started you start making more money, they started charging more for the stuff. Cost of living went up. Well, you know, I can believe we can bring cost of living down. Amen? Or God get, inv get involved in our lives. And yeah. The men are just kind of sitting there going... Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Now, I want no redneck woman. I can tell you that. I'm a redneck woman. <laughs> anyway, I mean, uh, dug my keys into the side. I mean, women go there cutting the cars up. That's, that's not what God called women to do. Cutting the leather seats and punching holes in the tires. My brother broke up with, my brother broke up with his redneck girlfriend when we were in high school. Uh, and we woke up next morning his, uh, his, um, his Tempest, Pontiac Tempest. He had let the doors unlock. And there were eggs in the air conditioning vents all on the instrument panel. I don't mean eggs sitting up there. I mean eggs crushed in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Say a virtuous one. You, you want a virtuous woman, men. Hello, y'all here, you going home. Yep, I mean, she egged up the inside of that car. Praise the Lord. She'll do him good and not evil all the days of his life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willing with her hands. She's like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers the field, buys it, and with the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her mer merchandise is good. Her candle goeth out not by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle. Her hands hold to the staff. She stretches out her hand to the poor, yet she stretches forth her hands to the needy. Um, she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Why? Because of um, verse 12, she'll do him good and not evil. I remember one woman told, gave counsel to a pastor's wife one time. Her husband was a little bit of a slob at that time. And she said, well, just, just, just basically let the garbage overflow, let the house look bad, and embarrass him. 
That was, that, was, that was the essence of her counsel. Well, the Bible says that the virtuous woman does him good and not evil. Amen. He'll grow up one day. There's always hope, women. <laughs> he will grow up. Amen. Because you do him good. You don't try to embarrass him. No. At the council, among the elders, are you here? Um, where was that? Yeah, verse 23. Her husband is known at the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. They didn't come over and see the house dirty and messed up because he was a slob. Are you here? You made him look good. Then the men said amen. The women are sitting quiet. Now, come on, women. Say amen. amen. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is a law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Boy, there's a lot to say here. I'm going to try to go through each one and say a little bit of something. All right? You see, the virtuous woman, the woman who takes care of her household, is highly esteemed according to the Word of God. Now, we got cute little phrases today. Y'all know what I mean? We don't, we don't have... Um, you know, um, I was trying to find this. I know it's in my notes somewhere. My notes get kind of funky on me here. Where is that thing at? That's in here? All right. I think it lost part of my notes. Anyway, you know what? God did not call us. You know, when we, we, we got down with women have to, when they say they're a stay-at-home mom, they got to they gotta defend it. You shouldn't have to defend being a mom. Are you here? Career women look at you like you got the play, you got the scabies, you got something. When you say, I, I, I take care, I'm, I'm at home with my kids. We come up with, co with, with phony titles. Domestic engineer. Hello? I'm a domestic engineer. I, I am a mother. I take care of my household. And, oh, what's wrong with you? Why would you want to do that? Because I'm training another generation. I'm investing in something you can't, I'm investing in a life. I'm, I'm, tra I'm, I'm training up a life for Jesus. Hello? I I'm bringing up a child in the ways of God. Are y'all here? You're going home. Amen. Hallelujah. We should, we should not be ashamed. Women don't ever be. You shouldn't have to say, I'm a stay. You shouldn't have to go, I'm a stay-at-home mom. We, we, we get all these weird things, and it's always defensive, and we should be proud. My job is to raise my children up in the ways of the Lord, and, I, and I'm training another generation to serve the Lord, and I take care of my household, and I'm proud of it, and I can outwork you any day of the week. Hello. Now, I could, I could see Gina, you know, kind of run their home business at home on the computer with, with Katie running around, hanging on her, and, and, and bust her up some tree somewhere, and, and managing all that, and still having time to have uh, some, some Boca burgers ready for Greg when he comes in. Let's see, is there a scripture about Boca burgers? Let's see here. She doeth him good and no harm all the days of his life. Well, anyway, I'm teasing. Hallelujah. I remember the days of Janie doing all the stuff, helping, helping with the church, helping run the church from, you know, administratively, uh, taking care of three kids, you know, trying to homeschool two with Nathan. Anyway, that's a lot of work, yeah. You know, you're homeschooling and you're taking care of Nathan. And that was all right when he was a little roly-poly kid, but he didn't say that way. You know, when he had all those, those triple, triple rolls under his neck, yeah. Some of y'all don't know, but remember those days. We got a picture somewhere of that, don't we? Bib the Michelin baby. All right, look at Proverbs 31.10. It says, a wife of noble character, who can find? This is a different translation, by the way. Um, she is worth far more than rubies. Men, let me say something. If you go after a woman because she's hot, and she's in the gym all the time, and she's got six-pack abs, hello? And she spends all day long looking good. She probably ain't going to be real swift at home. 
we put we got a lot of emphasis now on women, you know, looking like they're, you know, they're running for the fit, Miss Fitness USA and kind of stuff. You know, they'll get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go work out in the gym so they can go to work. I'd rather you get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and just hold your babies in your arms and tell mommy loves you. You're precious and you're special. Amen? Are you here? You're going home. You go back and look. You go back. How many of you ever saw the movie The Help? You know, all these, all these white women had all these, you know, uh, uh, African-American maids. And the maids were more the mama to the babies than the mama were, mamas were. And then that one would tell that baby, you are special and you are precious. Huh? You are smart. You are important. You're special. You're, you're whatever, all the other things she used to tell that baby every day. You know, that really ought to be coming from our moms. Amen. Amen. I know we had a generation of, of maids that raised our, our children because women were going into the workforce. That shouldn't have been that way. The mom should have been doing that. Are you here? You're going home. Mom should be taking your babies in your arms and telling them, you know, we want virtuous women. Amen? And let's face it. When you get to a certain age, your body just ain't going to look like it did when you were 18. You can suck, tuck, augment, stretch, redefine, add to everything else in the world. And eventually, you, it's just going, it's, it, they're going to reach the point you can't do any more stretching or tucking. Hello? I mean, you can't do a nose job, a chin, chin job, a back end job, every other kind of job there is in the world to do. Eventually, all that fleeting beauty is going to get away from you. So guys, think about that when you're looking for a woman. You want a virtuous woman, one that loves the Lord, one that puts the things of God first. Amen. Are you here? You're going home. Amen. The Bible says, you know, her, you know, listen, she has, she has moral integrity and she is invaluable. Are you here? And, and, and let's face it, men. Men always want the hot woman. Look, you're going to get 55 and want to wear your gold chain and jewelry over your fat belly. <laughs> Unbutton your shirt and think you something else with your new sports car. And then some young chick's going to look at you and you're going to go, woo, I still got it. No, she's looking at your money, honey. She ain't looking at you. She thinks you got some money. She, you, want a, you want a virtuous woman. Hallelujah. She's, her, her, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She's trustworthy. Thank God for trustworthy women. Thank God you can trust your wife. Y'all hear you going home. She brings him good not, and no harm all the days of life. She's faithful. Hello? See, the world mindset, we, we got all these shows on television, Desperate Housewives. That's just pure bovine. See, if a man got a godly woman, she's faithful. The women who are godly are not desperate housewives. They're too busy. Are you here? And then what really gets me is the, is the wife, the, wife that, the man's got so much money, she stays home, and they still got a maid and a nanny. Because they don't want to take care of the kids. Like, take this. It's time to change them. Take this. It's time for their, their, for their food. Listen, you need to change them. And take pictures of your husband with puke in his mouth. I know that was But see, Janie, I had Jessica. She had just eaten. And I had her up like this. And I was in a recliner going like this. And she went, Bleh! And I was going, hey, baby. Oh. Janie, instead of coming and taking care of the situation, goes and gets the camera because this is posterity. You've got to save this one. So I've got an upset running down the side of my face, and she's laughing like crazy. But you know what? Those are, those, are, those are memories you make, and she has a picture of it. Huh? To prove it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. But she's faithful. Hello? Amen. Listen, men, I'm going to tell you something. The woman who's chasing you down while you're married will chase another man down as she marries you. I'm talking, to the, I'm talking to the internet folk too. If she'll mess around with a married man, what makes you think when you marry her, she ain't going to mess around when you marry to her? What's she looking for? She's looking for her day when she ends up divorcing you, getting half of what you got. Or got left and divorcing the first wife. Now you want a faithful wife. You want a virtuous wife, a wife that honors and loves you. You, you don't want somebody else's leftover skank. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. 
See, the world is pushing so much stuff that everybody can't think right anymore. And they, they don't honor motherhood. They don't honor their wife. Men, you honor your wife. You honor the mother of your children. Hello. You respect them. You take care of them. They brought your children into the world. Amen. Barbie hadn't had any children yet. Hello. Hello. And let's face it, if she won't look at you when you, when you were young, if they won't look, if them kind of women won't look at you when you were younger, they ain't, the only reason looking at you now is for another reason. It's your wife, the mother of your children, amen, has been taking care of those kids and raising them up and, and training them to serve God. She's virtuous. She's faithful. She's trustworthy. Uh, she selects wool and flax and works with her eager hands. She's ingenious and proficient. Thank God for an ingenious and proficient woman. Women can, I mean, it kind of used to be a joke in the church. We had people in the church. They, they wouldn't know where Janie was. She'd be going and finding specials on top of specials. I, the girls need new swimsuits this year, and their swimsuits were supposed to cost how much? Regular price, how much were their swimsuits? $29. That was, on, that was a special. So what's the regular price? They didn't say. This year, the special this year was $29. It's a name, name brand, expensive stuff. She got them for $9 a piece. Same suits. See, she's like that. You know, she can find stuff. Man, See, uh, see, the, see the, 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 vir the virtuous woman is ingenious. She's proficient. She finds stuff. She finds a deal. Amen. You know, and it got to be a joke at the church at one time because Jane was finding all this stuff. Uh, like, you know, they, she was helping train these younger moms on how to get, how, how to get the deal. And now they got the internet. Lord have mercy. I got boxes sitting on my porch all the time. Because we, we get stuff, she finds stuff so much cheaper. Like uh, we, we, we use a certain kind of, of tea for our sweetened tea. We use Tetley round bags. Is that Tetley? Okay, we use a Tetley round bag decaf. Well, they're expensive. We get them so much cheaper on the internet and they're delivered to your house for free. You have a six-month supply, you just deliver it to the house, put it on the shelf. There you go. She, I mean, she just looks for deals. She finds deals. She, she, she's virtuous. She's ingenious. She's proficient in genius. Ingenious. She, she's proficient. She, you know, <coughs> and, and um, I know we got women in here like that, you know, that, that grow their own vegetables and that kind of thing. And they're, they're, they work their own little gardens and that, that kind of stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. Miss Gerling, how are your collards doing this year? Got the birds are eating them. Get the shotgun. Let Nathan come over. He'll take care of your birds. Listen, the, the virtuous woman is thrifty and laborious. She's like merchant ships that bring up the food, food from afar. See, a virtuous woman is not laying in bed at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and going back to bed at 4 o'clock in the evening. Hello? Or she's not just running around to the shopping malls. and You know, we, we, we went out to eat recently and saw some women in there. And uh, Nathan was with us, and he, he, got, he could bear testimony to this. And the table beside us, I thought, these women don't get out much. They're older women, and all they could talk about was the kind of wine and stuff they were drinking and the cognac, and just loud and boisterous. And it's like they were trying to make sure everybody knew that they could drink. La di stinking da. Were we impressed? Were you impressed? Why are you not shaking? Why are you just, Nathan, were you impressed? Listen, you know, no, she's like a merchant ship. She's labor. She, she labors well. Amen. She, uh, she's thrifty. Hello. She can, she can get work done that you, in ways that nobody else can get it done. Amen. She's dutiful and considerate. When she gets, she gets it while it's dark, provides food for her family and portions for the servant, uh, servant girls. I think, like I said earlier, talking about Janie's mom getting up and cooking every morning. Every morning, they got up out of bed. Her mom had made homemade biscuits. Homemade. Now, and I'm not talking about Hardy's made or McDonald's made or Biscuitville or Carter Brothers or BFAC. I'm talking about homemade. Right there in the kitchen. You get up, get, getting ready, getting your teeth brushed, getting your clothes on, and you can smell the kitchen. Bacon being fried. Biscuits in the oven. And listen, and one of their favorite things to do, her daddy would go get hoop cheese. Old, old fashioned hoop cheese. And about half those biscuits had a hunk of cheddar in them. 
Oh, yeah, mercy. Jerry said mercy. Yeah. Coming to there, and, and that cheese had run out some on the pan, and, and it, it had, had gotten a little brown. The, the smells of childhood were not the fast food drive through were not Fruit Loops. Her, her smells of her, now listen, my, now in my household, if we, if we got breakfast, we always burnt the bottom of our biscuits. I don't know, if, I think that was delivered so we could count, make sure we kept up with how many everybody had, because you have to cut the bottoms off and stack them by your plate. But Janie's mom would cook every morning, and, and then, and then she, when she, even when she was in college, she'd come home at lunch from East Carolina, and her mom would cook, you know, I mean, she had a pile of collards on or a pot of cabbage on, hallelujah, are you here with some fried chicken and mashed potatoes and gravy and homemade biscuits again? Huh? That was back then. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So she's dutiful, considerate. She provides for her house. Listen, I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm saying, I'm saying we've got to get a mindset. We need to train our children. This is the way God wants it. We've had to do some things because of the economy or this, or because we, we were in just difficult situations. This is not the way we wanted to do it. But we had to do certain things. Don't, don't, don't tell your children this is the way it has to be. Say, you know, we got caught off guard. We got caught up in this thing. We, we're, we're trying to make some adjustments. And, uh, but I want you to believe God that you'll be able to be the virtuous woman as a, as a, as a daughter. Amen? And, and do these things for your, ha your household and your family. Amen? Janie can make homemade biscuits, guys. She's about to talk me how to do it. Not quite. I, I get them right about every other, about every third or fourth time I'll get them right. Other times they're either too, too hard dry or too whatever. Hallelujah. All right. She's tireless and healthy. She sets her, about her, her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. She, she gets out there and gets after it. Amen. Um, she is efficient and watchful. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. Hello. Uh, she's skillful. In her hand she holds a distaff and grabs the spindle with her fingers. She's charitable, she opens, she's charitable and merciful. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She's fearless and provident. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all them are clothed and scarlet. You know, she's taking care of it. She's prepared. Now, I, I've seen my wife time after time after time after time. It's not winter yet, and there's a, there's a sale of some, something maybe the year before. And she'll buy it on sale the year before for next year. She would kind of guess how big the kids are going to be next year when all the coats went on sale and buy them this year and have them ready for next year. And next year we'd get here and she'd go pulling them out of the closet. Here's next year's coat. Here's last year's coat. Well, you know, and listen, I'm going to tell you something. Who cares if you're wearing the coat that came out at the end of last year or the, the new color for this year? You ain't freezing. Hello? And it saved you half price. We've been to outlets in the middle of the summer and bought coats for the winter. Because they were, you know, they were last year's style or last year's colors, but they were they were sixty percent or seventy percent off of what you're gonna pay when the new new ones come out this year. See, and so when winter gets here, the kids, you know, I remember one time Nathan grew through, was it Nathan or Jesse that went through three sizes, shoe sizes? It was Nathan, from Thanksgiving to Christmas, he went through three shoe sizes. I mean, I'm just telling you, I mean, we bought some brand new shoes right before Thanksgiving, had to buy some more after Thanksgiving, and buy some more before Christmas. It's like, okay, next pair you buy are six sizes too big. <laughs> I mean, he wore them three times. My feet hurt. What? You can't, we just bought them. You reach down there and his boat, toes are balled up at the end of them. How did that happen? Well, his, his growth spurts hit, all right? She would always, she would guess and guess good in advance. Then the girls hadn't even got home. And she saw a really cool sale the other day. We went, we were at Old Navy. They had the specials. She's already bought the girls some stuff for the summer. They're not even home. Didn't get to try them on. She knows what they wear. You've got, your wife, your wife is, um, is probably, she closed the household. Men, don't be stupid. Uh, I started to say stupid. I'm trying not to be uh, ugly. Men, don't be stupid. What are you buying that for right now? Because winter's coming. I'm going to get it cheaper now than I am going to be when winter gets here. We, well, you know, take, we, yeah, that's money. We, you know, that's money. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's going to cost us 60% more in November to buy the same thing. Let your wife do her job. 
I said, let your wife do her job and get out of the way. Now, I'm going to say something here that's not, I don't know if it's in the notes, if I'm going to get to it or not. Men, men, your wife, the mother of your children, has got brains. She's not a bimbo. She's wise. Take advantage of that. Is that right, Mr. C? Yeah, he says, Amen. <laughs> I love those headphones. <laughs> I look at those headphones, and I, 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 every time I look at them, all I can see is the aliens on Toy Story. <laughs> the claw, the claw. I've been chosen. Have you been chosen, Mr. C? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm chosen. Anyway, how many of you seen Toy Story? The little alien guys? All right. All right. She is refined in taste for decorating and furnishing. Let your wife decorate the house and stay out of the way. I, you, you got all these guys on television now, and they, you'll see them buying these houses, and, and the men are overriding the woman at every turn. Shut up and let her do what she's anointed to do. You want some man cave in every room. Most of the time, you just sleep there. She lives there all the time. Hello? Let the woman decorate the house. Amen. And let her dress you. I, now, I know this. I'm, I'm going to pick on Lloyd now. <laughs> Debbie has been working on Lloyd since they got married. I don't even know if Lloyd gets to wear a white shirt anymore. When's the last time you wore a white shirt at the church? <laughs> Only at funerals. Okay. <laughs> Boy, she's got him wearing bright colored shirts. I mean, all different kind of color shirts. I mean, he looks like a cardinal coming to church. He's strutting his stuff because she knows what she's doing. Amen? And I think he finally, he finally said, you know what? She knows what she's doing. Isn't that right? He doesn't like being picked on like this openly. You guess. All right. But the Bible says she makes coverings for the bed. She's clothed in fine linen and purple. And listen, she is refined. De Debbie's refined in taste for decorating and furnishing. And listen, my, my wife, when we, I'm going to pick on me now. Now, when I, we first started dating, now, listen, there's nothing wrong with clothes from JCPenney now, but back in the day, I mean, they used to advertise something called plain pocket jeans, you know, because they were cheaper than Levi. Levi, you're plain, you know, and, you know, back in my day, JCPenney was not exactly, I mean, we, we kind of tried to be fancy, we called it Jean-Claude Penet and all that kind of stuff. It was still pennies. And I, used, and I had these shirts, I had these two shirts I thought were the coolest shirts in the world. I had burgundy corduroys. I wore them with my duck shirts. And Jamie looked past the duck shirts and the corduroys and the plain pockets and thought, my God, I can help that. <laughs> now, your women are always going, your mothers, your wives, and, and, and why, what, the wives and the mothers are always going to have, everybody else has a project. Hello? You are the project, husbands. Kids, you're the project. They're going to dress you. If you listen to them, they'll dress you right. They know what looks good on you. Hello? Now, Nathan's down there hiding now, because he, he, Janie, will, he'll, he'll come out with some stuff, and she'll say, what have you got on? What, Mama, nothing wrong with this. He does that all the time. Ain't nothing. Mama knows what, and then she'll get it, say, go put this on, put this on, put this on. Nathan, she, and, and all the women. I mean, he goes to school. He's got teachers pinching his cheeks and talking about how good looking he is and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> He, he, he said something to one teacher about the fact that he's a little Cherokee. She ran down and pinched his cheeks and says, hey, I can see that little Cherokee in them cheeks. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You know it so, don't you, buddy? They, they came in, and uh, <clears throat> he was in a suit for juries, and one of the teachers said something about he looks so good, she's going to make him sing. <laughs> 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 yeah, just go ahead and give me the A. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But your wife, you know, man, your wife knows what she's doing, and, and, and kids, listen to your mom. They know what they're talking about. They know what looks good on you. Hello? They know how to send you out of the house looking good if you'll listen to them. Because that's that why. She's, she is, that's, that's her, part of her calling. She's refined in taste for decorating and furnishing. Your men, you'll be respected because of, uh, because of her. You're respected at the city gate. When you take your seat among the elders of the land, the, the wife 
your wife and the mother of your children will cause respect to come to you. Why? Because your children, your children won't be at the grocery store in the middle of the aisle throwing a, what they call a two-year-old tantrum, a temper tantrum. And, you're, and your wife's sitting there going, a virtuous wife, going, well, we'll, we'll just let them work it out. You know, we don't want to break their spirit. <laughs> I will, you know, you need to put a Medea on them. Well, what was that guy, Tyler, not Tyler Perry, um, Steve, Steve, Harvey. Steve Harvey. He said, you know, I was in the mall one day, and there was some, and he, he's a black guy. He's, you know, he's got black humor, tells a lot of black ch church humor. But then he, there was some white kid over there throwing a fit in the mall. And, and this black woman turned around to her baby and started beating him. If you ever act like that in public, I will kill you. <laughs> Had you done anything wrong? Just if you ever act like that, I'll kill you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Is that, I mean, isn't that right? See, the virtues with your kids. My kids didn't lay down the floor and throw a fit. I've been down the grocery aisle before, and some kids down there kicking and screaming, and the mom saying, well, we're, we're not, we're not going to get it. Or they're just standing there waiting for them to get it out and blocking up the aisle for everybody else. Child, if you want to breathe another breath, you know, my kids never did that kind of stuff. Hello? Did Janie abuse them? No, but we spanked. <laughs> went, to the, went to the paint store one day and wanted to get some uh, stirring. I needed a vines of paint. And I needed the, the paint stirrers. I said, you got any five-gallon paint stirrers back there? He reached out and said, yeah, I know what you're going to do with this. <laughs> I said, yeah, it works real good. Just the right thickness, you won't break it. But if you, get, if you hit it too hard, it would break. But if you, you, know, you, know, you can wear that backside out with that. Kids would cry about the rod. Get that wooden spoon out. Oh, mommy, don't do the rod, not the rod. Mommy, not the rod. You know, too late. But our kids knew how to behave in public. They didn't embarrass, my children didn't embarrass their daddy. Are you here? Because my wife trained them right. Amen. People talk about how good our kids are, and how wonderful our children were. I always talk about how well behaved they were. We were, on a, we were on an international flight one time. Nathan was a little bitty baby almost. And we were flying overseas. Well, he, wasn't, he was about two. He was about two. Because we had to put him on the harness to keep, keep up with him. We had him on the dog, dog harness. And... Had him on a leash. You had to. I mean, you know, you're trying to keep up with Jesse. Jesse, mommy, 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 mommy. <laughs> and Nathan's gone. And he, he got away from us at the Sistine Chapel. We were in line looking around, and he was gone. You're in Italy, and he's gone. We're, we're, he's, he's climbed a wall. But other than stuff like that, our kids never embarrassed us. We, so we're on an international flight, and the stewardess came to the end of the flight and told us how well-behaved our children were. And, of course, they had the, 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 the evil child two rows over or whatever that screamed and hollered the whole flight. And the parents, would, they would come and try to get the parents to do something. Oh, they're okay. Well, not for the rest of the plane. They're not okay. You know, you got your earplugs in reading your book. Everybody else is trying to go to sleep in the camp because your kid's going, ah! And just, just, and they even came and brought us extra ice cream and stuff because our kids were so good. Oh, yes, sir. It's amazing how stuff, stuff sticks in their head, isn't it? Hot fudge because our kids were so well behaved. See, my wife raised our children so they didn't embarrass their daddy. They made their dad look good. Are y'all here? You're going home. Thank you, Greg. It's still here. All right. She, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can, she can laugh at the day's... To come, she is dependable and hopeful. You can trust your wife to be dependable and hopeful. She speaks wisdom and faithful instruction is in her tongue. She's wise and filled with understanding. I'm going to tell you, men, well, you're, my wife don't have a bachelor's of this, so she's not, you know, she, she got out of high school. I'm going to tell you something. Women are anointed by God with wisdom, if you'll listen. Now, here's the problem. Now, I'm going to kind of hit a man-woman thing right here, husband and wife. Because men, if you want your children to grow up and be good kids, 
Let your wife run the house and don't treat her like she's stupid. Because your sons will grow up and treat their wives like they're stupid. And your daughters will marry a man who treats her like she's stupid. Because that's all they've ever seen. You listen to your wife and listen to the wisdom she has. And I tell you, half the time that men don't want to listen to the women is because they want to do something and the wife's telling them they shouldn't because it's going to cost too much or they don't have the money to do that or they need the money to do this and you're going to go out and do what you want to do anyway. Only Nerf pistols are allowed. Go ahead. Have you hit me yet? Okay. Your wife is wise. She don't have, listen, you don't have to have a college degree. A lot of people who got college degrees were educated beyond their intelligence anyway. We used to have somebody come to our church years ago. They got, their, they got their master's. I'm still trying to figure out how. And then they were going to go somewhere else to get their doctorate. Now I'm going to tell you something. They were rebellious. They, were, they didn't have any wisdom. I mean, they left their kids in the middle of a major city while they went out and fulfilled their career, lost their family. Kids went to the world. Hello? All because they were going to get an education. There's nothing wrong with education. The education, listen, women, you are equipped. I don't care if you, well, I didn't even finish high school. I am telling you, you are equipped by God. You are equipped by God to run that household and to raise those children and have wisdom for your husband. Men, you need to listen to your wife. Well, she ain't out making the money. No, she's home taking care of the house. Are you here? I think somebody actually figured this up a few years ago that if, a one, if they paid women that they were at home with the kids, they'd be making, they'd be making six figures. Their, the workload they have is a six-figure workload. Hello? All the stuff they have to do to raise that household and take care of that household and all the errands they have to run, the things they have to manage and all the things, hoops they have to jump through to take care of everything at home. So men, listen to your wife as you're raising your children. She knows what she's doing. Now, women, that was a really, really good place for you to get an amen in there. Because the men been amen in the whole service. I thought I'd throw a really, a really good one in there for y'all. She's practical and energetic. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She's honored by her household. I'll tell you, when mother, listen, moms, when you raise those kids up and you train them right and you teach them right and you live a right lifestyle in front of them and all these things, your kids, when you get older, they're going to call up and get up and they're going to say, my mom is a blessing. My mom was a blessing. Hello? She's godly and humble. Charm is deceptive. Beauty is fleeting. But a woman that fears the Lord is to be praised. I said this earlier. If all you can think about is getting to the gym so you can be a hot chick and your kid's going to daycare two hours earlier so you can go work out because you've got to get in shape. There's something wrong. That's, that's two hours with your children You'll never, that's two hours with your kids, you'll never get back. Does somebody else have the influence in their life? Well, I need to take care of my body. I get that. But you know what? Chasing kids to keep you in shape, that's, that's calisthenics. That's aerobic. That's an aerobic workout, chasing babies. Hello? I mean, I, you know, you, you got a baby in one arm, you got, you got this on another arm, and you're doing something else with your mouth, trying to, you know, trying to open a handle on something or whatever. I mean, that's, that's, that's something. One time we were at our other house, and I was upstairs on the, on the landing at the top of the steps, had a basket of clothes. And we had to stop Nathan from going somewhere we didn't want to go, and he, I was barefooted. He bit my foot. Stuck my foot down there, stopped, and I saw his head go up, and there was nothing I could do about it. He went, hey, I had the two teeth up here and the two teeth down here, and that was it. I mean, he hunkered down. He almost got kicked across into the other bedroom. Now, the wife would have never done that. She'd have figured out a way to hold everything and pick the baby up, and never got bit. Isn't that right, honey? Why are you laughing? Hello? Let's see here. What did he say? <laughs> Give her the reward she has earned and let her works praise her at the city gate. Amen. We live in an era of Latch key kids who are streetwise, church wise, and world wise. It's of utmost importance to regain a biblical perspective of the role of mothers in our society. Motherhood, motherhood, motherhood is not 
a negative stigma that we must hide under phony titles such as domestic or household engineer, but rather the crown and the glory of a woman's life. One of the most important satisfying roles of womanhood is motherhood. Now, I say, well, I can't have children. There's a physical problem, and we haven't been... You know what? You can be a mom and adopt and be just as much a mom to an adopted child as you do to, to, to the children you bore and raise those children, and you'll be their mom. Hello? You'll be their mom. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. All right. You can, you can be a mom to those kids and love those children and, and bring them up and change a life forever. So this morning I, want, I was really after was changing our, uh, the, the societal mindset of motherhood, which has become so distorted these days. I wasn't trying to condemn anybody. I said that. I prefaced that, so you should have been prepared not to be condemned. Hello. Amen. We should, men, you should be raising your daughter. No, I mean, mothers, you should be raising your daughters to be godly women. Amen. And if, if you're in a tough place, teach them. Say, look, we, we're just in a tough place. This is not the way, way I want it. I want to be here. You're like her niece. She quit her job, went home to take care of her kids. And the devil will tell you, you can't make certain things. You can't make it. If you're a single mom, there's, 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 there's extenuating circumstances. I understand those things. Yet at the same time, we should be doing everything we can to facilitate around that. Amen. Amen. Hello? And yeah, I know people who work all day long, and the first chance they get to go out of town, they drop the kids off somewhere else and head down somewhere else and spend all their time vacation without the kids. What's wrong with you? I understand getting away sometime, but every time you do something, you drop the kids off because you've got to be alone? What's wrong with you? You know? And men, don't you be such a, 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 a help me, honey, problem so I don't get ugly. Be nice. She says, be nice. Don't be so selfish that your wife, you know, you tell your wife, we're going off by ourselves and you're not taking the kids every time you do something. I get to understand, understand once in a while. Maybe a special anniversary trip or something here and there. But, you know, for seven, eight years after we had started having children, we never did anything by ourselves. Maybe we went, and, and the, one, the one time we did, we dropped, we had them with, with, with a family in the church and stayed in town. And then that night, drove back over to ride by to see if they were okay and playing out in the yard. Hello? There's going to be time. Can I say something, husbands and wives? Especially husbands, because husbands get, get selfish. Well, I want you to myself. Husbands, I'm, I'm going to get you on Father's Day, so just, I'll just go ahead and give you a pre precursor. <laughs> Father's Day is a coming. That woman called of God to be a mother to those children. And your children need to know that family is, they're just as important to your family as you are to each other. Are you here? Jamie, now as we've gotten older, the kids have gotten much older. We've taken a few trips in the last year for two or three days by ourselves. We haven't gone many places by ourselves. Nathan's, Nathan's in college. He'll be out in three years or so. And, um, and, and then we're going to have the next 30, 40 years of our life together. Well, yeah, 30, 40 years to go do anything we want to do just to us. Yeah. But you know what we're going to end up doing? We're going to end up going somewhere and the kids are going to show up. Yeah. You know? But they're going to have their own camper. <laughs> you know? They're, they're, that's what I did. When I, we got enough, we'd go camp with my mom and dad. We, we'd pull up beside them and I'd pop up. They were in their motor home. We'd sit out there and I'd pop up. They'd sit in their motor home. We'd, we'd all sit outside and eat and then we'd go back to bed in our places. But so they, taught, they taught me a love for camping and spending family time together. All right? Don't be selfish. You know? You know, we're going off by ourselves. We need some alone time. You have your kids are in school. You don't ever get to see them, and you got to have alone time. Don't be selfish. You have a window of opportunity. Don't make your wife choose between you and the kids. Hello. There's only a period of time that we have to invest and to make things a certain way. There's a short window. And she's called, and her heart longs to impart and to do. And especially if she's having to work, you can't just make her work all the time. You get to spend time with the kids, and when you finally can't get away, you're going to leave them home so you can go party the whole time you're gone. Am I? At least shake your head yes. <laughs> you're right, 
Are you here? Now, our kids went everywhere with us. Yeah, but y'all need some long time alone. I've got years. I got years coming. And actually, we're starting to run into that some now. I mean, um, Nathan went camping because that's why I had to go pick him up. Uh, the other day, we had, you know, two days just us around now. I'll tell you what, you almost kind of go, where are the kids? Because all that noise is gone. You know, all the in and out. I mean, all the stuff that's going on in the house, you're starting to hit that little empty nest thing a little bit. And um, you know what? So you're going to get the time by yourself. And at the beginning of it, you're probably not going to like it. Well, I sure wish the kids were here. Hello, Janie's missed the girls, having the girls around. I've missed having them around, you know. I mean, I've missed getting jumped on. Don't you start it. I don't need for Nathan to jump off the steps on me. <laughs> but no, no matter where I show up, Shannon comes running. And jumps on daddy. Hello, you know. So th- you got plenty of time. You got plenty of time. Let your wife be the mom. Let her bring the kids. Don't 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 do all your vacation. Don't do hardly any of your vacation. Make it a, make it a rare occasion, especially when they're young. Your kids like the beach just as much as you do. Probably more. Hello. There was a time you couldn't get, Nathan. Nathan was sitting in those little pools. Jesse was the same way. Those little pools at Myrtle Beach that formed and chased the little fish all day long. Put a mask on and chase them all day long until the tide came back in and washed them away. We just sit up under the umbrella and watch them chase fish all day. You know? You, I mean, you, Nathan, he, he still likes to fish. He just likes to get bigger ones. So don't, don't be that way. Let your wife be what she's called to be. Trust her. Honor her. Let her be a mom. Let her raise the children. Because it's a glory and honor for her. Amen? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the, the, this opportunity to talk about the glory of being a mom and, the, and, and the, the transformation of our thinking back to a biblical view so that motherhood's a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a godly thing. And Father, we thank you for blessing the people in Jesus' name. Amen.